The M3 submachine gun was adopted mid-war by the U.S. Army. It was designed to be cheap, sturdy, easy to use, and light. On film, it's rarely used compared to its more refined counterparts. When it does show up, its crude look stands out, as does its distinct sound when done correctly. Ah, So let's take a closer look at this simple but effective weapon that has seen service well into the 21st century. A fucking standing job. Saddle up. The US Army started World War II with one of the most expensive submachine guns ever used by a military. The Thompson was a great submachine gun, but it was heavy and despite being simplified for the Army, still shared many characteristics of an expensive high-end sporting weapon. Go back to bed, Michael. The M3 would follow the same path the Germans and British took with their submachine guns, which focused on inexpensive stamp metal production. The British and their allies had the Sten, and the Germans the MP40. The grease gun got its name from its simplistic design. It had a wartime cost of only $15. And you can see how it shares its looks with the grease guns of the time, ironically a tool also used by some of the same vehicle crews who would be armed with M3s. Done much killing? No. You will. <sighs> Boys, take him through that gun. Roger. The M3 did experience teething issues once introduced to fighting units. Sights were fragile, there were concerns over barrel removal and retention, issues with bolt retraction, and the simple buttstock was not overly secure. Accidental magazine releases were further an issue, but almost all of these problems would be addressed by late 1944. Though the Army would end up producing over 600,000 M3s during the war, it was never produced in high enough numbers as intended to replace the Thompson, in part due to the many refinements made to the weapon during production. Ready? Uh -huh. Get up. On film, you'll see a mixture of M3s and M3A1s. You can tell the difference by the removal of the crank type cocking mechanism. Users of the M3A1 would instead simply cock the weapon by putting a finger into the cocking slot or hole and pulling back the bolt. The safety for the M3 was simple and connected to the ejection port dust cover. What do I do with this? Oh, shut up. Take a look at it. See that cover? Yeah. Open it. Now you killing. Close it up. Now you ain't. <laughs> the M3A1 saw limited use in World War II, but they were well liked and easier to service than the M3. Even the wire stock could be used to aid in cleaning and maintenance. Perfect. One disappointment for the M3A1 was that it did not address the magazine issue. M3s used the same type of single feed magazine found in the Sten that were cheaper to manufacture but less reliable than those used in the Thompson. Hello oh, boys, Looks like we've caught ourselves a couple of big fish. One nice fat crop trout. That's enough now. The grease gun had a slow but controllable rate of fire and fired the same 45 caliber round as the Thompson. It's definitely been criticized over the years for its accuracy, but also praised for its simplicity and compact design. It was well liked by tank crews, drivers, and even paratroopers who appreciated its compact build. On film, where the grease gun stands out the most is Attack Force Z and the Dirty Dozen. In Attack Force Z, You'll find many M3A1s fitted with suppressors throughout, and it was an excellent weapon for this purpose. Though historically, this commando force would have used Australian silent Sten guns. The movie is well worth a look, and features both a young Sam Neill and Mel Gibson. You tidy up back here. I'll join you in a second. Your party. If you haven't seen The Dirty Dozen, definitely check it out if you like the fun action thrillers of the 60s. Think of a 60s Inglorious Bastards, but where everyone is armed with an M3A1 
and is a prisoner turned commando. What are we going to do about that? Well, feed the French and kill the Germans. All right, I'm Johnny, and thanks for watching this brief little amateur overview on the grease gun. Feel free to add any information in the comment section below, and we'll see you in the next video. Why is that guy going to phrase?